morning guys. Well the day's finally here. After many months of doing this van build, we're actually starting our European tour today. We got up bright and early this morning at 5am and we're heading down to New Haven to catch the ferry to Dieppe. It's about a four hour crossing from New Haven to Dieppe. It's a little bit foggy this morning. The forecast did say it's going to be brighter later, so hopefully we'll have a nice calm crossing on the ferry. I'm just coming down the M23, down past Gatwick, down to New Haven. I'll touch base with you again as soon as we get to New Haven and we're waiting at the port to board the ferry. So we're not even a couple of hours into the trip guys and uh, we were making good time so we pulled over to grab a cup of coffee and coming out of the services one of the lights on the dash has stayed on. Now it's saying ESP. Now either my van's just gained the ability to read people's minds or we've got a problem. So we're just going to have a look on Google and just see exactly what the issue is. It's a bit worrying, we haven't even got onto the ferry yet, we haven't even got out of England and we've already got van issues. So I'll come back to you in a minute when I've had a look and see what the issue is. Okay, well according to Google, ESP stands for Electronic Stability Program and I believe it takes information from loads of different sensors all over the van to do with cornering and mainly traction control I guess so if your wheel's spinning or cornering hard or things like that which I definitely wasn't but it is damp this morning so it could have been slipping in the wet. Um, the only annoying thing is I'm not too sure at the moment how to reset it there was something online that suggested moving the steering wheel fully to one side to the right, moving it fully to the left while you're in a stationary position with the vehicle running. So we might try that while we're waiting to board the ferry, see what that does. I'm reluctant to cancel the ferry crossing because you know we've been building up to this. I'm still gonna go over to France, even though we've got this issue. And then if I can't reset it, then we'll just have to try and find a local Mercedes dealers as soon as we get in France and see if they can have a look at it for us. But stay tuned guys and we'll give you an update in a minute. We've had a bit of a stressful week leading up to this departure. During the final testing of all the services in the van and that our toilet decided to spring a leak. So we had water everywhere in the van. I did video that whole scenario because it turned out to be quite a bit of a mission to get that repaired I mean we had about four attempts to get a, a suitable fitting that would stop that leaking so I'm going to cover that in a separate video because there's a couple of issues with that cassette toilet that I wasn't really happy about we also had a couple of issues with our solar charge controller we had the wrong controller it wasn't compatible with our remote and we ended up driving all the way down to Orpington in Kent to pick up another one at short notice because they wouldn't deliver one next day so all in all we've had a few little troubles and it's been a bit stressful so the last thing we could do with at the moment is van issues you know we're all excited everything was all sorted set off this morning thinking happy days and now it looks like we've got an issue we're only a couple of hours into the trip anyway onwards and upwards we'll give you an update in a bit once we find out a little bit more I just turned the van off and then restarted it and that seems to have reset the ESP light so I wonder whether when I pulled away from the services it might have just lost a little bit of traction on this wet road and it probably just brought on that traction control so we'll keep an eye on that and just hopefully that's gone away right well obviously stopping the van turning it off and turning it on again has actually reset that ESP light it's gone out now so maybe that just was, perhaps we lost a little bit of traction when we was pulling away from the services because it is quite wet on the roads this morning. And maybe that was just enough to kick in that traction control. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's not going to reappear. But we have done a bit of research and there is a Mercedes-Benz dealership in Dieppe, which is open till seven o'clock today. So we'll keep an eye on it today. If it does become an issue, then maybe we will get it checked out. But I've never seen that come up before. But if anybody does know any more about that, then please do leave a comment below and let me know 
whether that's something that just comes on as a warning or, or whether there's an issue there that we need to get looked at. We're now sitting in the queue waiting to get on the ferry. We're a bit early, we got down here nice and early because we, you know, the M25 is notoriously bad and rush hour on a Friday morning. So we've got plenty of time. It doesn't actually leave for probably well over an hour. So we're gonna sit here and uh, with the rest of the guys waiting to get on board. show you we literally have got no plan we haven't even scoped out where we're going to stay for the first night so Lou's got the maps out and uh, all the airs books which gives you all the motorhome stops all over France there's literally thousands of these little spaces where you can pull up most of them are totally free a lot of them have got services like toilets and showers and electric hookups free Wi-Fi and the most you'll pay, even if you had to pay, is probably two or three euros a night. So we're gonna head down, hopefully towards Le Mans, find a little camping spot that we can stop there. We only wanna do maybe a couple of hours and find somewhere to park before it gets dark, just for the first night, sort ourselves out, and then we can make some more plans for tomorrow. guys there's the ferry we just come off just driving into the center of Dieppe there's a load of vans down by the beach we need to pull up somewhere get our bearings before we head off get used to this driving on the wrong side of the road lock right what we'll do is we'll get the old sat nav into gear so we know where we're heading we've got a bit of a plan but we're here in France <laughs> Happy days. Right, so we've decided to drive en route to Le Mans and uh, it's a little bit too far to get there before dark. So we're gonna do a couple of hours, maybe about 70 miles and hopefully stop off in a little town. It's spelt Ruggles, but I imagine with the French it's pronounced Rugley. And there's a little motorhome camp there so we can pull up for the night. Um, the write up on it was pretty good it had some good reviews so hopefully we can get a space there get there before dark and then we can do the rest of the journey tomorrow so, anyway let's get on the road I'm driving on the wrong side of the road babe I know it feels really weird it does feel weird to start with I know we've driven on the other side of the road when we've hired cars in Spain and that and it, it does take a little bit of getting used to I think the roundabouts are more tricky than anything else but I think once you've got your head round it, the first couple of days it'll feel weird, but then it'll become sort of second nature. Nice bit of sunshine though. So what's the verdict? How was your first night in the van? It was good. It was warm, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was really good. We, the Truma heater works absolutely amazing. I put it on uh, 16 and then put it on an eco setting, which is on the lowest fan speed. And I think I only heard it cut in a couple of times over the night, just really quietly but it just kept the van really nice and warm and toasty. So that works really well, really pleased with that. 
left the vent open about two or three inches last night just to let any of the sort of moist air out that seems to have worked really well a combination of the heat and the ventilation has kept all the windows nice and clear and we left those screens off for these fantastic fans as well so we didn't have any blackout blinds but I think it's good to have a bit of natural daylight in the van I think maybe with a max air fan you wouldn't get as much light in as we have with these fans boiler came on a couple of times in the night but I think major it was really warm actually just open up the curtains have a look no condensation tiny little bit at the bottom here but nothing major really and really frosty outside so it was a cold night outside there was obviously below zero minus one or two thick frost on the grass over there but really warm inside here and no condensation whatsoever it is warm as toast overnight on the heating what we've been doing with the settings is on the temperature we've been leaving that at 16 degrees so if it drops below 16 the heating will come on and then on the fan speed we've just left it on its eco mode which is the very lowest fan speed setting so it's nice and quiet I mean you can't even hear it <clears throat> unless the fan comes on on a boost setting uh, it's the only time I've ever heard it other than that it just comes on overnight and it doesn't wake us up or anything so if it's set at 16 if the temperature does drop in the van at all the heating just comes on very quietly in the background and just keeps the van nice and warm and then that just reduces all the condensation issues as you've seen on the windows you know we haven't had any condensation at all and it's really frosty outside 10 o'clock in the morning it's nice and bright and sunny outside although the sun is very low on the horizon but it looks like we're getting like 54 volts and a couple of amps into the charge controller and the batteries are creeping up now nicely 13.2 volts they are going up in value they were sitting around 12 and a half or 12.6 overnight so with any luck with that solar array that we've got up there we shouldn't have to hook up at all we should be completely self-sufficient for the whole of this trip so the plan for today guys we're not going to move anywhere today we kind of was in a bit of a mad rush to pack the van up so we've just literally sort of thrown everything in so we're going to have a day just sorting the van out get it sort of so it's usable when we know where everything is we've got a couple of little small jobs left to do i think i've got a magnet to fit on the pan drawer because that kept flying open when we were driving down yesterday so i'm just going to have some muesli i've got my nice cup of tea here and then we'll get cracking sorting the van out we parked in one of these airs which is like a municipal motorhome park this one's actually free it's got loads of facilities it's got water toilet emptying facilities there's even a local laundry and there's thousands of these all over Europe you know I'll put some links in the description for where you can buy the guidebooks and the maps that tell you where they all are but if we can camp like this for free all over Europe that's going to save us an absolute fortune and it's a lovely little spot in a nice little quiet village and you've got the added security of a couple of other people parked here with you as well so We just walked across to the adjacent car park and there's another one of these service points so these must be located all over France here you can get obviously potable water there is a hook up there there's a couple of taps and there's even a toilet emptying facility as well and it's all free there's no charge so that's brilliant a lot of these service points have got a convenient ground drain for your wastewater and grey water so we literally just pulled the sprinter over here. I'm just emptying out the grey water before we drive off. Sort of advisable just to empty your grey water tank before you're driving around because it's just that extra weight that you don't need to lug about and just save you a few miles per gallon. It's middle of the day on day three. We spent another night in Rougay last night 
just to get ourselves familiarised with everything in the van really so we were comfortable with it and get stuff packed away where we wanted it to be and uh, this morning we had breakfast and then we're making our way now down to La Rochelle which is on the west coast of France right on the sea it's about just over 200 miles from where we are so I expect it's going to take us about four hours So we parked about half an hour outside La Rochelle because the original parking spot that we was going to go to just looked like an empty car park to be honest so we're in this nice little country park it's dark now so I can't show you around so I'll give you a walk around the facilities in the morning and uh, on tonight's menu is chilli and rice get stuck into that and stick the heating on and enjoy the evening so there we go, a lovely chilli con carne, cooked by yours truly. And I've just got to give a toast to Mike, who was our postman, because he's brought endless parcels to our door for this van conversion. And he very kindly gave us this bottle of wine as a leaving present. So this one's to you, Mike. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers. I'm going to enjoy this. Good morning, guys. This is the view from our window this morning. We're parked in this really nice little picturesque country park spot. It's very remote, it's right out in the middle of a load of fields. And we're struggling to get phone network signal, that's how far out we are, but a pretty little place to park up for the night. There are services here. I think you can see where that van's moving around in the background there. There's water and waste facilities. I think because it's early in the season it is still really quiet over here. There's not many vans out. You can see there's one van over there and I think there's a couple on the other side of us. A really pretty little place to park up. I'll be putting some details in the description of where these places are that we've stayed if you want to stay here as well. Morning, Lou. Morning. She's a good girl, Danny. I'm washing up now. I can't hear you. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely sunny day. little walks around these lakes and then they've also got catering for fishing by looks of it as well there is a little fishing hut back there where I guess you can get a day license if you're into fishing beautiful little spot though Most of these airs and motorhome parks have a dump station. You just need to look out for this sign and then what you'll find is somewhere where you can park the van, usually over a grate. And then here is a cassette toilet emptying station. It's got water and a drain there. So we're gonna take advantage of this. Open the gray water tank and let out any waste that we've had overnight so that will just go into the floor gully that's down there and we'll also clean the cassette toilet out as well at the same time right, I know a few of you are a bit dubious about having a toilet in your van but I can't tell you we've only had this van in use for a couple of days how useful that has been just to be able to go to the toilet when you need to 
and if you're concerned about emptying a black water tank on a cassette toilet I'll show you how easy it is. That is all completely sealed, there's no way anything's going to come out of that. I'll take it down to the waste disposal and we'll show you how easy it is to do. So here is our cassette, we just need to swivel the spout around, undo that, and then there's a button on the back here, you just need to press that, which lets the air in, which releases all the contents. I just put a little bit of water in there. Just give it another swill. And that's it, easy as that. And then on this flush, there is a flush to flush that. Just because we live in a van doesn't mean we have to look like Tom Hanks on Castaway. This is one van lifer that's not going to be supporting a beard. Right guys, right, we've sorted out all the van, had a cup of tea, tidied up everything, emptied all the grey water and the cassette toilet tanks, we're all ready to go. We're only about 20 minutes outside La Rochelle, so what we want to do today is go down and see if we can get near the coast, somewhere down where the beach is, and uh, enjoy some of the uh, sights and the sunshine. Made it down to the beach, the tide is right out though. Very shallow, I reckon you could probably wade out quite a way before you got out of your depth. Lovely bit of beach as well, huge great big stretch of beach. When we were planning this van and building it, this was going to be the best part of it, was being able to sit on this little bench seat here, right next to the beach, have a lovely bit of lunch, chill out, relax, and just watch the world go by. waves and listening to them crash on the beach. Definitely feel much less stressed in this environment. <laughs> 